An Oxford house fire that killed two men this summer has sparked murder charges against a third Oxford man. A stretch of nice weather coming up across East Alabama, but some big changes ahead for next week. We'll have your complete forecast details straight ahead. Coming up in sports, a local school is getting a $1.6 million renovation to their football stadium. EA and Local News starts now. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by WM Grocery, located in Heflin, Wadawi, Roanoke, and in Piedmont. Hi, we're glad you could join us. I'm Katie Edwards. And I'm Mike Stedham. Oxford police have arrested 51-year-old Arthur Turner and charged him with two counts of murder in connection with a fatal house fire at 24 Main Street in Oxford on June 20th. Chief Bill Partridge says Turner was taken into custody in Knoxville, Tennessee, following a lengthy and technical investigation into that fire. Turner is being held in the Calhoun County Jail, and Partridge says his department also has other pending charges against the defendant. Turner is charged with the deaths of Thomas Lee Perry, 81, and Jimmy George Smiley, 52, who both lived in the house with a number of other family members. Oxford firefighters entered the house while it was still ablaze and rescued an eight-year-old girl who was taken to Children's Hospital and has since recovered from her injuries. Three other adults were brought out of the house that morning with minor injuries. Oxford Fire Chief Gary Sparks told EAN News that all of those who were rescued were members of one family and there were other residents who were not at home when the fire broke out. When we come back, state officials are now taking public comments about a quarry being planned for Calhoun and Cleburne counties. Since 1993, WM Grocery has been a major part of our local community. WM offers the very best in fresh produce and an outstanding meat department. WM also has many local products not found anywhere else and fresh sushi every day. If you need an event catered, come see Mrs. K at any WM store. Curbside pickup is also available for your online grocery orders. Be sure to download the WM app for all the deals of the week and shopper rewards. Go check them out today at any of their locations. We take pride in our community and appreciate your business. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by Oxford Lumber. Come visit any of our locations in Oxford, Jacksonville, Talladega, and Roanoke. Residents of Calhoun and Cleburne counties have less than a week to comment on plans for a limestone quarry that would straddle the two counties just south of Interstate 20. Pillar Materials LLC, a subsidiary of the Taylor Corporation of Oxford, has received tentative approval for that quarry from the Alabama Department of Environmental Management, which will accept public comments on its website through next Wednesday. Lance Taylor, the president of Taylor Corporation, tells EAN News that his company bought the 400-acre site about three years ago and has been working with ADEM for the past two and a half years to meet all of the state's requirements for permits covering both air and water emissions from the quarry. Taylor says the property was used as a quarry in the middle of the 20th century, but it was abandoned sometime in the 1970s. It features an outcropping of limestone, which his company plans to turn into material that can, that can be used for construction purposes. The only entrance or exit to the property will be off US 431, just south of its intersection with I-20. The site borders parts of the Talladega National Forest and comes close to the Chakalaka Creek in the eastern part of Oxford. Taylor says he's reached out to several environmental groups and to people who live near the proposed quarry to tell them about his company's plans. He says he wants this to be an open door process and he's been speaking with individuals who have questions about the operation. The plans he submitted to ADEM include settling ponds that are even more than twice as deep as those required by the state to make sure that no sludge from the quarry can reach the nearby Chakalaka Creek. Although a draft of the permit has already been prepared, it can't be finalized until after the public comment period. 
One local resident who has been raising some questions about the project is Dana George of Oxford, who's concerned about how close the quarry will be to several natural resources. She's been using Facebook to make local residents aware of the project and to encourage them to make comments. I think we just keep, uh, keep plugging away and trying to get ADEM to listen to us. Uh, I would really still love to see an open community forum. Uh, I think it would be great to, to know what's planned for people to be able to hear it firsthand and hear what the proposals are to keep it from affecting the environment and just the land in general and the people uh, who live around here. Meanwhile, Taylor says that if ADEM does issue the permit after the comment period has ended, it'll probably be after the first of the year before work can begin to reopen that quarry. He says it will create between 8 and 12 new jobs, and having a new limestone quarry should help local construction companies reduce their cost for some major building supplies. When we come back, Jacksonville will be showing a free Christmas movie on the square this Saturday night. For over 60 years, Oxford Lumber has been servicing our area and our customer service has always been our main focus. Our customer service is what sets us apart from anyone else. From the moment you enter, our highly trained staff will treat you like family. To enthusiastically provide total customer satisfaction within a positive and self-fulfilling employee relations environment. Visit us at any of our four locations or at OxfordLumber.com. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by Waldrop Manufacturing, metal buildings made right here in Calhoun County. The City of Jacksonville has announced that this Saturday's Christmas Village program will conclude with a movie night on the town square. This Santa Claus 2 is the feature movie beginning at 6.30 p.m. Blanket and lawn chairs are recommended. Let's see, the Santa Claus 2, that wasn't bad. The first one was the best. Yeah, I, re I haven't seen the second one, so well, maybe I... Maybe and, I and, it, it's and it's free. free. It is, it no, is. What can you say? Well, what we can say is we hope there's good weather, because if we're going out to watch a movie outside, even with blanket, we want to make sure there's no rain. And one person can tell you the answer. That would be John Holder, who joins us now in the EAN Weather Center. John, what is the weather looking like? Are we going to be able to enjoy an outdoor movie? Mike and Katie, well, if you're on the weather tomorrow night out in Jacksonville and all across East Alabama, there could be a few light showers. We'll talk about the complete forecast for all of East Alabama next. For metal buildings in Alabama and the Southeast, Waldrop Manufacturing is your one-stop source. A Waldrop metal building provides the coverage and protection your investments need. They specialize in carports, RV covers, portable buildings, and storage buildings. Stop paying rent for storage. With Waldrop's price per foot, you can actually save money by buying straight from the manufacturer. Waldrop buildings are guaranteed because Waldrop manufactures buildings with U.S. Steel right here in Calhoun County. Waldrop Manufacturing, serving the entire Southeast. Give them a call today. Less clouds today across East Alabama and more sunshine than anticipated. And that sent temperatures soaring this afternoon. 75 for the high today, 10 degrees above the average. The low this morning, 53 degrees. Again, about 12 degrees above the average for this time of year. Record high temperature, 82. The record low, 22. Your sun rising tomorrow at 617 with a sunset at 440 tomorrow evening. That has been the theme, has been above average temperatures for the last couple of months. We may see an end in sight to that coming up by the time we get into next week. Weather on your street for your Thursday night, mostly cloudy skies, no rainfall out there. It's going to be very mild, 53 for the low out on Chakawaka Road in White Plains. A very nice evening. Most of the evening hours we will be in the 60s. Coming up tomorrow, a nice day ahead across East Alabama. We'll have clouds and sun mix, kind of like we had today. River Road over in Rambert and Cleburne County, about 71 for the high tomorrow. Again, above average temperatures, but we think the rainfall will only be about a 20% chance. Very, very light and spotty showers, if anything, coming up during the daylight hours tomorrow. As we head into the weekend, we're going to see Friday night a few showers. We'll talk about that, but plenty of sunshine this weekend. Temperatures are going to be in the 60s out on Cedars Road in Munford down in Talladega County. Again, a nice weekend. 
coming up. Looking at the seven day forecast, you're going to see there will be a chance of showers Friday night. We mentioned that about a 40% chance of a light rain shower Friday night. That should not be enough to rain out or postpone or delay any outdoor activities, including those playoff games or outdoor movies or anything like that. Just be aware there could be a light passing shower. Most of the weekend, though, as you're going to see, is going to be fantastic. 67 for the high on both Saturday and Sunday day with plenty of sunshine, a warm morning on Saturday morning, a cold morning on Sunday morning, very briefly, only on Sunday morning, dropping down into the upper 30s at 38 degrees. And then Monday, that's when we're going to be drawing your eyes to. That's what we're going to draw your eyes to is Monday, a 70% chance of showers and thunderstorms, an 80% chance Monday night, a 60% chance on Tuesday. This would be the first widespread beneficial rainfall that we've had in East Alabama in over two months. You would have to go back to the middle of September, the last time that we've seen widespread beneficial rainfall. It looks like we're finally going to get that. This could be the drought buster coming up on Monday, Monday night, and Tuesday. There could even be thunderstorms involved. We haven't had any thunder around here in two months either, so we could be looking at strong to severe storms in here Monday afternoon, Monday night, maybe during the day on Tuesday. We'll refine the timing on that, but just be aware there could be thunderstorms and potentially some heavy rainfall involved. We'll take it. Highs in the 60s, nighttime lows dropping down into the 40s and 50s. Everyone kind of looking ahead to a sneak peek to Thanksgiving coming up in a week. Right now it looks like dry weather. All these storms will be out of here. Drier and cooler weather as you see Thanksgiving morning going to feel like Thanksgiving dropping down into the low 30s once again across East Alabama. We talk about the need for thunderstorms. We usually don't want thunderstorms, but we need thunderstorms and we need rainfall. Here's the latest drought monitor. This is issued weekly and as expected, the drought is continuing to expand across the state of Alabama here in Calhoun County. Just just about the entire county now in a severe drought, still a moderate drought in Cleburne County, but you can see very close by, we have an extreme drought right on our doorsteps. And we think by next week that this is going to expand even further because not much rainfall coming until at least Monday. So again, we need the rainfall desperately as we are now in a severe drought here in East Alabama. Tomorrow morning, 6 a.m., join me for the local breakfast forecast. We'll update everything coming up for tomorrow and the weekend. And then I'll see you back here tomorrow evening for our EAN Local News. By the way, we've got sports coming up next with Namath Pitts. Going to talk about some big stadium improvements coming to Watt Mosby Memorial Stadium in Anniston. Namath. Thanks, John. Big changes are planned for an Aniston sports field that has not been altered very much over the course of 80 years. A $1.6 million renovation of Aniston High School's Lot Mosby Memorial Stadium is expected to be complete in time for commencement exercises in May of 2024, weather permitting. During a meeting last night, the Aniston Board of Education voted to approve the renovation project, likely the most thorough makeover the stadium has seen in its 84-year history. The renovation will include a new artificial turf playing field and new visitor bleachers at a cost of $1.6 million. Ken Goble, the Aniston School System Facilities Coordinator, told the board members that the new visitor bleachers will be ADA compliant. Basketball action continues tonight for nine Calhoun and Cleburne County teams. Let's preview each game taking place tonight. Let's start with arguably the biggest game in the area, Plainview at Oxford. Plainview's been a dominant force in basketball, winning multiple state championships. They've already made the trip to Calhoun County once playing Faith Christian. They now make the trip not long after to face what some would consider to maybe be one of the best Oxford basketball teams in quite some time. The Donahoe Falcons are going to go on the road to face the Mumford Lions. The Donahoe Falcons obviously looking to improve on last season. They make the trip down to Taldega County tonight to face off against the Lions of Mumford. We just mentioned Faith Christian. I have got to give Coach Hughes some credit. The schedule he has built, hosting Plainview, going and facing Gulf Shores, He's got Oxford on the schedule, I'm pretty sure. And here Faith Christian is hosting Chris Randall and the White Plains Wildcats tonight. 
Coach Chris Randall's teams coming off their loss to Oxford Faith Christian, coming off uh, another game as well. So these two teams are going to meet at Faith Christian. This is going to be a sneaky good game, White Plains at Faith Christian. A couple nights ago on Tuesday night, Gaston hosted Sacks. Well, tonight they host the Ohatchee Indians. Ohatchee's the next Calhoun County team making the trip up to Gaston to face the Bulldogs. The Ohatchee Indians are on the road at Gaston. For Coach Bo Wynn and the Weaver Bearcats, they're opening up at home against Asheville. The Bulldogs are headed out to Weaver to face the Bearcats. Caden Gooden for Weaver, obviously looking to have a good year. Harper Lee, another good player for the Weaver Bearcats. And uh, this is going to be a much improved Bow Win team for Weaver that thinks they have a chance to win an area championship. Weaver and Asheville. This one right here is another sneaky good game. The Jacksonville Golden Eagles on the road at Talladega. Everybody knows that Talladega, you go back to five years ago, this has been a good basketball team. Jacksonville, talk about building a strong schedule to start the year. They played Springville, Springville Tuesday night. They get Talladega tonight. They have went on the road and faced some tough teams, some tough environments. The Jacksonville Golden Eagles on the road tonight facing Talladega. Speaking of Jacksonville Christian, they went on the road Tuesday to face the Georgia School for the Deaf. Tonight, they go to Talladega to face the Alabama School for the Deaf. Coach Miller's Jacksonville Christian team had a good game Tuesday night. They go on the road looking to stay uh, win less, or win, and they look to stay undefeated as they go to Alabama School for the Deaf. For the Pleasant Valley Raiders and Coach Hood, they're going on the road to Ragland to face the Purple Devils. Pleasant Valley is going to go on the road to Ragland, just right outside of, uh, right past Ohatchee, uh, not too, too far of a drive for Pleasant Valley, as the Raiders are going to go on the road to Ragland. And our last game for tonight is a brand new team, TJ Thompson over at Hope Christian Academy out of the Lighthouse Church in Oxford. They are hosting Marshall Christian. Uh, this is going to be, again, uh, talk about sneaky good games tonight. This is certainly one of them, TJ Thompson and Hope Christian Academy, getting better every game they host Marshall Christian. That's it for EA and Local Sports. Let's go back over to Mike and Katie. Thanks for that update, Namath. And thank you for watching us today. You can find us here online every weekday on Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram, and on our website, eastalabamanow.com. Just go to our video feed and watch us whenever it's convenient for you. We'll see you back here on Friday for your news on your schedule.